So I was born and grew up in England, but I'm now a naturalized American citizen. Uh, at quite an early age, I became interested in the historical connections between Britain and the United States. My father taught at Columbia University in New York, and from the age of seven, I would uh, cross the Atlantic every year. And my interest in Jefferson really stemmed from my first book, which was on the British Caribbean and the American Revolution. It's called An Empire Divided. Uh, and uh, as a result of writing that book, which was largely on the Caribbean, I became much more interested in the American Revolution and through that in the role of uh, Thomas Jefferson. And my early work uh, was unrelated to Jefferson, but I've just written a book. Uh, it's called The Illimitable Freedom of the Human Mind, Thomas Jefferson's Idea of a University. Uh, this is a topic usually treated as the sort of epilogue of his career. Uh, and it nevertheless was uh, his creating of the University of Virginia was something that he wanted to be remembered on his tombstone with his two other great achievements, uh, author of the Declaration of Independence and the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom. And I believe that his ideas about education, not just the university, but public education, are on a par with his thinking about political liberty and religious liberty. Indeed, he believed in order to have intellectual freedom, you had to have religious freedom and political freedom. Well, I think so often many of our national heroes uh, can be extremely insular. Uh, they're not that interested in the outside world. And this is a reminder that he owned the Koran, that Jefferson was not only interested in the outside world, that he was cosmopolitan, but that he was actually fascinated uh, by the different religions of the world. Uh, his real hope was that one of his friends, like Joseph Priestley, the Unitarian, would go through all the great uh, biblical works, all the uh, statements of religious faith, and find a common thread. What do the Hindus, what do uh, the Muslims, what do the Jews, what do Christians have in common? And to extract that into a separate uh, book of uh, faith. And it also really is an important symbol of his ideas about religious freedom. He always used the term religious freedom, not simply religious tolerance. And although today we question Jefferson because he was the owner of some 600 slaves during his lifetime and because we know that he had uh, some six children by an enslaved woman, Sally Hemings, uh, we can often forget that uh, he made a real contribution to modern America, and perhaps his greatest contribution was his idea about the separation of church and state, uh, as it was expressed in his Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which for much of the past two centuries was the main uh, bill used by the Supreme Court to interpret the First Amendment on freedom of uh, religion. Well, his uh, predecessor as president, John Adams, accused him of plagiarizing that statement from John Locke. Uh, and that's John Locke's second treatise on government. But Locke had actually said, life, liberty, and property. Jefferson very deliberately changed it to the pursuit 
of happiness. And th this phrase actually comes from Scotland and the Scottish Enlightenment, which was a huge influence on Jefferson. Jefferson's tutor, while well, he was at William and Mary College, was a Scot by the name of William Small, who had known many of the leading figures of the Scottish Enlightenment. And Small uh, would have introduced him to this phrase. The Scottish believed that man was a social animal, that people were not naturally bad, uh, and that if left to themselves and not even governed, uh, you could achieve a happy state. Um, so in a way, it was uh, an early version of utilitarianism, uh, you know, that government should be the happiness of the greatest number. We often forget the extent of religious bigotry at the time that Jefferson lived, and it was not simply against non-Christian faiths, it was against other denominations within Christianity. Uh, the Catholics were especially discriminated against by Protestants and vice versa, but there were also rivalries between different Protestant uh, groups. Um, Baptists were persecuted uh, in primarily Anglican Virginia before the American Revolution. Jefferson believed so strongly in religious freedom because he thought it was essential to uh, preserving freedom of ideas and to political freedom. He was very fearful that uh, most religions were politically ambitious, that they wanted a monopoly within the government uh, and within their societies. They wanted to exclude other religions. This is how he viewed them. And uh, he also argued that to have freedom of religion, far from discouraging religion, would create competition among religions which would compete with each other and that the best may win. He happened to believe that some form of Unitarianism, a uh, religion based on rational beliefs that rejected the idea of divinity, he happened to believe that that would be the religion that most Americans would ultimately choose. But he was proved right uh, in that the United States today uh, is more religious than most of Europe. Europe, places like Germany and Britain, still have official state religions. So his idea that competition, rather like competition in business, would actually lead to more evangelization uh, has proved to be true. Uh, in other words, unlike the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution, Jefferson and the American Revolution were not anti-religion. Uh, they simply wanted to ensure that uh, it didn't uh, prevent, you know, extreme dogmatic religious beliefs did not prevent the success of the Republican experiment in government. Well, Jefferson was very uh, keen that the university should really be the first in America to be a secular university. It would not have a chapel, it would not have a department of theology. This was revolutionary at the time because at almost every American college, it was compulsory not just to go to chapel on a Sunday, but to attend chapel twice a day. As far as there was religious freedom, it was between different Protestant groups. There was still a lot of discrimination against Catholics and especially against uh, Jews. His university was the first in the country to have a Jewish professor and it was unusual in having Catholic professors from Europe. And these were 
remarkable individuals. The Jewish professor was called Joseph Sylvester. He is the mathematician who introduced the word graph into the English language and the use of Hebraic terms uh, in mathematical language. Uh, he eventually ended his career teaching at Johns Hopkins and then as professor of mathematics at the University of Oxford uh, based at uh, New College. Uh, it was an extraordinary career but people like him were being excluded from teaching in colleges. Uh, Jefferson really showed the way uh, by having uh, religious freedom, by encouraging freedom of thought. Uh, he told the professors that they could not be removed except by uh, a huge majority vote of the overseeing board of visitors. He guaranteed them a sort of academic uh, tenure. He paid the highest salaries in America other than uh, Harvard um, and he encouraged them to do uh, research and writing by selecting what he felt were the very best uh, individuals available to teach at uh, Virginia. Uh, people whose credentials were based on their reputation and their earlier work. The other distinguishing feature of the university is that uh, he was very early in introducing what's known as an elective curriculum. This is where the students choose their courses rather than just go through a set series of courses which they're required to study. He really gave them more freedom than modern students in that they did not have to do these courses in any particular order. The students did not go through the university as a class, which is popular today. And this system has become the defining feature of higher education in the United States. And it in many ways complements his ideas about political freedom, allowing students to choose for themselves uh, and to be independent. Uh, there had already been experiments at the College of William and Mary and the University of North Carolina, but it was Jefferson's University that popularized it, not least at Harvard, and the university had a major impact on higher education in such uh, colleges as uh, the University of Michigan, University of Texas, Austin, um, the uh, M MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, whose founding president was a former professor at the University of uh, Virginia. It had a particularly strong influence in the South.